Welcome back to the channel guys and girls. Thank you very much for all the comments on the last video. They were, they've been brilliant. I can't thank you enough. And thank you very much for your patience because I know it took ages to get out. But we're jumping straight back into it. We're not wasting any time. Come on to my go-go juice. And we're gonna jump straight back into this thing. Now obviously the last episode we tackled all of this and the comments have been great. I mean, it, yeah just been brilliant but I did leave you with a question on the last one about what I should do with here uh, I'm not, a couple of people have said I should just block it off and just leave as is but if I'm honest with you that's going to bug the hell out of me if I do that so I've made an executive decision I'm going to make a new plate to go in around this edge I'm not going to overlap it like this and spot weld it to here I'm just going to butt it up to here weld along here <clears throat> and then put my right angle back so I've got my three layers of steel across here one because I know it, it will just bug me if I know that that's there and not covered up and two it makes a nice little perch for my jacking point to go on that I want to make so kind of a two-in-one thing there so that's going to be the th first thing we're going to tackle in this video and then I would like to move on to some rust repair because I keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off but I need to bite the bullet and just get on with it so what I've done I've bought a couple of floor pan sections off a guy called Jack Morris on Facebook he breaks Audi S3s so if you need any parts and give him a hollow he's a good lad but yeah like I say I bought a couple of floor pans I didn't actually need that one so if you need a passenger rear Audi S3 floor pan get in touch because I've got a spare one but I do need this one however as you can see it's uh, got a gaping great big hole in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out what I need to I'm not going to go mad with it and try and replace the entire floor section because it's unnecessary we'll do that and then we need to move on to some of this more critical rust so I need to cut this strip out here cut a bit out around here and more importantly I need to sort out around where this rear trailing arm is which I have been quite nervous about if I'm honest because obviously this is quite a key point to the rear end of the car and it needs to be absolutely dead on and I'm hoping the plate that the rear trailing arm bolts to beneath this layer of steel here is fixed in other places so as soon as I cut this out it isn't just going to fall out so yeah we'll see what happens on that one I'm going to stop waffling, I'm going to drink the go-go juice, get my cardboard out and we're going to crack on and make a template. This is what I'm going for with this piece. Basically, nestle it in along this leading edge here. The X is there. I'll just um, the more dimple dies. I've measured it out, so these dimple dies will carry forward, and they're the same size all the way through up to where I'm going to possibly have my jacking point. So I'm not going to bring any more over because it's a bit, a bit pointless. So that's the general gist of it. As you can see, I've got a bit of a, it comes along and then it drops down a touch and then goes across. So I'm going to have to have another go at that um, tip and die situation. Hopefully I can get it right this time. But I reckon that, that will just finish that off a treat. But like I say, the dimple dies there will carry across. So I've got no intention of leaving these dimple dies wide open to the elements. I'll probably put some like rubber grommets in most of them just leave the lowest ones open so any moisture can get out but it's just another way of getting into into the bodywork to spray um, like cavity wax or, or whatever other stuff I can get to try and keep it protected for as long as possible but yeah that's that so I'm gonna drop this out now go and pop it on some steel and see if we can make this shape work
many, many, many minutes later, we have a nice little piece ready to go in the car. Now I've actually set this up properly and moved the bloody, whatever you want to call them, gears over and set that right. It actually worked a hell of a lot better. Still need to um, make like a big wheel or something because this is super awkward to try and operate by yourself. Like, ridiculously awkward. Right, let's go and pop this in the car and I'll show you what it all looks like. And there we have it. I could have done with that lower edge there being tiniest little bit longer. But all in all, it's pretty much on the money. So what I need to do now is measure out for my dimple dies. But where I've had to sort of put a little bend in there, I'm not too sure if I'm going to get away with having one here now because it's going to move the panel about a little bit and I don't think I'm going to get that bend back in once the dimple dies in there. So I might just have to have the one there and leave that maybe just as a normal hole rather than a dimple dyed hole. I don't know. We'll see. I'll clamp it up and we'll start marking it all out and see what happens. Oh no. Need to spare a minute for a fallen warrior. Just drop my bloody die grinder off the car and it's broken the battery. That's gonna be an expensive mistake. Don't. There we go, that is it clamped in place, obviously. Now, like I say, I'm not too sure if I'm gonna be able to dimple dye this one, because I've got a little bit of a curve here, and then that bends down a touch there as well. So as soon as I dimple dye it, and it forms that ring, I've got a feeling that's gonna try and straighten out these little curves I've had to put in. This one, however, is absolutely fine. So I'll dimple dye that, then it'll flow across to that one. Don't know if I'm going to bother doing anything with that one. I might just leave that. It's not really a necessity anyway. But we shall see. It's now quarter past ten, so I'm going to bugger off home and I'll pick you guys up next time I'm down here. Hopefully you guys agree, but I definitely think that looks better with that bit puzzled in there. Just finishes it off in my eyes. So that is now buttoned up. I do need to just go back. There's a couple of little pinholes I need to sort out. Um, but it's a bit too late for welding now. So I've made a start 
on that, which is going to be my pad for jacking up on. Oh, see, it's a bit hard trying to show you it like this, and I'll keep going in front of the light and putting a shadow over it, which doesn't help. But yeah, that's basically the gist of it. Just something solid along the sill that I can jack up from. Again, I'll be doing a similar thing up on that front area there, just so I can jack up, get the car in the air, and then put the side stands in without having to jack up off the actual lip of the sill and damage that. So this is going to be the next thing we're working on. I'll try and do it all in one piece, as it is in cardboard, and we'll see how that pans out. But that is a job for tomorrow. It's way late now, and I'm going home. I'm going to go to bed, and I'll pick guys up tomorrow, hopefully. Like a glove. Look at that. That is not too sorry in the slightest. I've done my best to follow all the contours of the car, included this little step bit here because there's a step in the panel so they overlap, overlap. Sorry. I do need to just hold it back ever so slightly when I come to weld it in, just on this corner here, just so that, that flange there meets the chassis. But that is looking pretty damn good. I've obviously put the dimple die inwards on this one because if I have it coming out like that, it's just going to get crushed inwards anyway with the jack. So preempted that and just stuffed it inwards anyway. Right, next step then is going to be punch some holes in for some spot welds. And then I've got a prime all the inside of it. We'll spot it in, and then this bit is fully done. And we can move on to something else. Jigsaw puzzle piece, God knows what at this stage, I can't even keep tabs. But that all looks pretty good to me. Get out of the light so you can actually see. So that is now done. Still need to do a bit up around here, but I'll do that at another point. 
can't be bothered doing that right now. But what we do need to do is move on to this area. So I need to cut around here, lose all that rotten section, and then down there, I have got another panel, like I say. After that, we move on to some other rust repair, i.e. this bit here. The state of my gloves. You'd think I'll get these for nothing with the way I keep going through them. They don't last five minutes. And then we've got to move on to that bit, which, as I say, I'm not looking forward to that because that is a bit of a scary thing to be cutting out of my car, to be honest. But we shall see. We'll tackle it regardless. Right, I'm going to turn this car around a little bit so that that's more at an angle to me. Right, so we need to cut this section out. Now this new panel that I've got isn't 100%, as you can see. It's still got a bit of corrosion around there. I'm hoping it's gonna be way better than that. So I'm gonna clean off all this undersill. I'm gonna go back to using a chisel and a heat gun in the aim of not making an absolute mess everywhere. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, wish me luck. Hopefully that doesn't go too far down. If it does, then I'm gonna have to get back in touch with Jack and uh, see if we can find a new other floor pan section that isn't wrong. So, fingers crossed. All right, let's get on with it. Sod it, grinder's coming out. Right, well hopefully that gives you some insight into how long this takes. This stuff, this sound deadening stuff inside the car, I found, works really well with a heat gun and a chisel, as you would have just seen. I mean, a lot of people use dry ice and whatnot, but I can't get hold of that anywhere locally to me, so this is the next best option. So obviously I still need to go around, get all the gloopy crap off still, like all the residue. But I'm going to use paint thinners and a rag for that because that takes that off in no time at all. And then obviously on the other side, as you would have seen, very quickly gave up with the heat gun and the chisel because I couldn't be bothered. So I got the grinder out and we have got a bit of rust. But like I say, it's 100% better than that. Way better. But at least now I've got something to work work with up here. I can just cut that circle out, patch in a new piece, and then we're good to go. So I am going to finish clearing all this off in my own time. I'm not going to make you watch all of it. And I'll pick you back up when it's all clean and we're good to rock and roll. Looks better already. So this is now my section of floor that I've cut down. Still need to clean up inside here, get it back down to bare metal and clean up the rest of the outside edge back to bare metal. But that is definitely 100% better than what it was. Obviously I do need to make that repair there, but that is neither, he neither here or there in the grand scheme of things considering that mess that's underneath it at the moment. So. Need to try and get my job done tomorrow, finishing off a bathroom, pronto, and hopefully I can get back down here. We'll scribe that in, hopefully make that repair as well, with any luck. But we'll uh, we'll play that one by ear and see how well my day goes tomorrow. But I'm looking forward to getting this bit done. Should uh, should make the underside of the car look way better once that's in there and once I've tackled that. Right, anyway, waffling again. See you tomorrow. All right then, back to it. This is what we've got to tackle. My day has not gone to plan today at all. So it is now already nine o'clock in the evening. I'm giving myself an hour down here tonight to 
to try and do something with this panel I need to cut in. So I'm hoping I can get most of the way of getting it ready to be welded in. But we shall see. So what I need to do is trim this down a little bit because it doesn't need to be as big as it is. So I'm going to trim down here and trim around this lower edge down here and that will probably suffice and then we're gonna try bear in mind I've never done this before try and graft this in and hopefully I don't cut my floor pan too big we shall see <laughs> what could possibly go wrong So that is what I've got left of my floor pan. This is pretty much as small as I can cut it without it encroaching on what I need to cut out. So, like I say, I've never done this before, so I'm very much winging it like everything else on this car at the moment. But my plan is I'm gonna draw a line around this, but I'm gonna cut a little ways in from my line just so I don't cut a dirty great big hole out of my floor that this then just falls through. And then I can start gradually grinding it back until this fits snug. That's my thinking at least anyway. So we get cracking on uh, marking this out. We cut an even bigger hole in my floor pan and hope that I haven't cut too much out. Wish me luck. more or less there I think I might actually just grow a pair and go for it to be honest yeah you reckon should we send it sorry let's send it Just spent a decent portion of time just uh, cleaning up all around this now. So all the outsides now clean, all the insides now clean and blah, blah, blah. Um, what I'm gonna do, my time is almost up. It is very almost 10 o'clock. I'm gonna just chuck a couple of spot wells in just to get it to sit in roughly where it needs to go. And then I'll hit it hard next time I'm down here. So, Let's bust the welder out and get this sort of fixed in.
my curfew has well and truly expired I'm half hour over where I wanted to be so it's now half past ten and that is where we are at so far it is not looking too bad in the slightest I have had a couple of spots where I've gone to weld and it's blown out um, which isn't ideal but then I realized that I must have knocked one of my settings on my weld and turned the amps up a little bit Dope. right I'm gonna sign off for tonight I'll pick you guys back up very soon and we'll get this bit knocked out uh oh I'm hoping I've got just about enough gas left in there to finish this off so as per the last clip you would have seen this is what we got up to last night I managed to do this in about an hour and a half which I don't think is too bad going considering I've never replaced a floor pan before so we need to fire up the welder we're finished welding this out and uh, we can move on to something else Hopefully one day I'll be at a stage of this welding and fabrication stuff where I might be able to get one of these panels in and make it look seamless. It hasn't come out too bad. It is a little bit lumpy and bumpy in places. But all things considered, it definitely looks better than what it did. Right, anyway, moving on. I think the next step, I'm going to tackle this strip here. I only literally need to cut out the strip itself. The rest of the metal is alright. It's a bit of surface rust on there, but the rest is pretty good. So I'm gonna find these spot welds, drill them out, and then we'll see if we can cut this out and get that replaced. It's amazing how quickly you can fall down a rabbit hole whilst doing this. What I've now found, obviously this is the piece I've just cut out, so I need to replace that. That's neither here or there. And uh, that up there. But now I've found there's a bit of rot there, so I need to cut a square out there. And there's a bit of rot round here as well. So I, ideally I need to cut that out. And replace that trouble is there's another little patch of rot here and another little patch of rot here question is how far do you go with these things I mean if it is a restoration and I wanted it to be a show car I wouldn't be so bothered but this is more intended to be a race car track car whatever you want to call it so how far do you go with it you know but I've got to go out shortly anyway, so I need to go home and get showers and go out for dinner with the boys. So I'll pick you guys back up when we're ready to start making this and that little patch repair panel. Thankfully, what else? Look, the other thing I've discovered is that where these bolts are for my trailing arm, that is a plate below this rotten section. Now, I was worried that once I cut this out, it wasn't going to have no support. But now I've cut this out, I can see it is supported right away up through here. So if I get all this bit done first, 
I'm now less worried about having to cut this section out because I know it is fully supported underneath there and nothing should move. But yeah, like I say, pick you back up in a couple of days when I can get back down here again. Oh, I'm getting sidetracked again, folks. I need to stop doing this because otherwise I'll never get another episode out. Right, paint stripper. I asked on the last episode what everyone would recommend to strip paint and pretty much everyone suggested this stuff. So I thought, all right, I'll get myself some of that. Then I see this earlier today in the Builders Merchants. I remember a friend telling me about this stuff about a year ago and he said it was really good. So I thought, sod it, I'll pick up a can. So this patch up here is 10 minutes of this Piltec stuff. And it's, well, yeah, it's pretty good to be honest. So yeah, like I say, that is 10 minutes. It's taking it more or less back down to the sort of base color that would come out of the factory, I guess. Because I think this sort of olive color is what they coat the shells in when they're done on the production line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some of this out and a paintbrush. We're gonna paint some on about there and we'll see what that does in 10 minutes and see if it can compare to that. And then we'll get back to the task in hand of fixing all that lovely rotten area of my chassis down there. Right, tripod it is. Someone also suggested once we put this on, cover it over to try and keep all the chemicals in. So what I'll do at some point, I'll try that method as well and see if that does anything to help. Right, let's give that 10 minutes and see what that does. See if it does anything without me having to score up the paint or anything like that. Stuff I used here, that Piltec stuff, I literally just sprayed it on. I didn't score the paint, didn't do anything of that nature to try and get it to dig into the paint. So, yeah, see what happens. This stuff is definitely working. Blistered up, lovely. All right, let's get a scraper and see how deep it's got. It only seems to be where I've painted it on quite thick. Over here, where it's quite light, don't really seem to have done much. Yeah, certainly doing something though. All right, let's scrape it off. that stuff does not mess about so where it all blistered up that's actually gone right back to bare metal now where it wasn't blistered say like up here i haven't got into this bit yet obviously where it hasn't blistered it hasn't fully gone through but yeah shout out to everyone that suggested that stuff that is going to be a game changer all right i'm going to scrape the rest of this off in my own time and uh We'll get back to everything else in a minute. Alrighty then, so we've got a bunch of puzzle pieces here. This bit and this bit are the actual chassis leg part and they are considerably thicker material than these bits. So I have got a thicker sheet of steel here, so I'm gonna use that for the chassis leg bits and we'll use a bit of scrap down there for the other bits that are just normal size. So let's trace all this out. We're putting the little, little bends and kicks and things like that. And then we'll get this uh, back and put, put back together.
there we go. All of the bits are just sat in place. Ignore the gaps because, like I say, it's just sat in place as best I can with some magnets at the moment. So, next up is drilling some holes in and uh, get it all prepped ready for welding. But it's not looking too bad. We are literally touch and go on gas. So whether or not I'm going to be able to get all this stuff welded in, I don't know. I might have to go and get some more gas tomorrow. We shall see. too sure if that last footage I've just tried taking is going to be any good because my welding mask might be in the way but that's now obviously that piece patched in that piece patched in next up is going to be that piece however I need to fill that hole there where I've drilled through with my spot welds but all the other holes more or less line up thankfully so I can fill all them in whilst I'm plug welding so I'll fill that up and then I'll pick you guys back up when I'm ready to weld this piece in fancy look at that that has not come out too bad in the slightest looking pretty good but I am officially all out of gas it said this last piece up but also I need to go and replace that but when we've done that we are going to move on to tackling this now this metal around the chassis leg is so thick I'm not even going to attempt trying to form these bends because there is a bit of rot down here as well so I need to get rid of that plan being I'm going to cut across here across the top up here and down here I'll remove and replace that part and then I'll cut this bit out separately and then puzzle that back in separately because like I say this stuff's so thick there's absolutely no chance in hell I'm going to be able to form these bends not without it taking an absolute age anyway right anyway I'm all out of uh, memory card so I'll pick you back up when I've got a new bottle of gas and we're back and we're fully gassed up 
You have to excuse the noise, John is literally behind that wall sanding down the Mark 1 Escort at the moment. His newly acquired project. And this is what we are now up to. I've just been cleaning up just to see where I need to cut out exactly. So I'm going to do this in two pieces. So I'm going to go from this line up round here, round there, and then down to that line. So I'll take that piece out and then I'll do this piece here separately. So we cut that out, template it out on some new steel, go from there. So we've got these bits now cut out, I saved you uh, having to watch me do that. This is the main big bit, that's neither here or there, that's going to be pretty straightforward to do. This one however, as you can see, it's got a big old bend in that, so I need to try and imitate that. So what we've got is we've got a template for that one somewhat of a template for that one it's quite hard actually templating that because of that bend there so I'm going to overcompensate on this to allow for sort of movement on this as I'm trying to bend that I'm not too sure how the metal is going to react to me bending it so cut that out and get on have it then folks it is done that one was well pretty self-explanatory really just a bend and a bit of trimming that one's not too bad I just need to do a little bit of final trimming just so it fits in the car spot on this one however what a sod this was to do my arm is going to be like Popeye's arms but that was so hard trying to do that the material is so thick I don't know if I can show you that I don't know if it'll relay through the camera, but the material is so thick, trying to bend them over this, the bench, and my block, and trying to bend bits in the vise as well. It was, yeah, it was quite the challenge, I'll be honest. So, let's take it over to the car. And voila. Like I say, I do need to trim it down a little bit just to get it all sat in there spot on. And this one I'm going to have to, because I, I could only go so far with it on the bench, but I need to spot weld it here and basically stretch this corner here in more so I can fully weld it out. But overall, I'm, I'm really happy with that considering I've got not a great deal of metalworking experience. 
that hasn't come out too badly in the slightest so i'll trim this down i'll get my spot weld holes done and uh, we'll get to welding this in We've only gone and done it it is all done and it is more or less rock free on this back corner now still that little bit of uh pitting going on there but like i say i'm gonna treat that that's uh not really worth worrying about i don't think but yeah it's looking good it's looking good like a tit didn't manage to drill my holes in the exact right place for my mounting point so i just need to open them up a little tiny bit more and just need to go back round and weld in where I'd missed on my uh, spot weld holes. Look at that. Ignore that bit. Went a bit lively with the grinder. <laughs> Dope. But this bit here, man, this is so hard making that. You, yeah. Fair play to you guys that do all this metal work and stuff on a daily. That is not an easy feat. Uh, not quite the short episode I said it might be at the beginning. So you have to give me some feedback, man. You'll have to let us know. Do you prefer the longer episodes? Would you like short ones? I don't know. I just get it in my head that I need to do certain things during an episode and I won't stop until I've done them. But if you prefer short ones, then I'll just get halfway through it for money, halfway through and end it there and pick it back up the next time. But that is it. That is going to be a wrap for this one. So I appreciate you all hanging around if you're still here. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.